The purpose of today's video lesson is to distinguish between two concepts in fiscal policy. As you learned in an earlier video, fiscal policy is defined as the government's use of the tax system and expenditure programs to stimulate or contract aggregate demand in order to maintain macroeconomic objectives such as full employment, price level stability, and economic growth. In this video, we're going to distinguish between two categories of fiscal policy that can be called discretionary and automatic fiscal policy. Discretionary fiscal policy is any change in taxes or government spending that requires legislative action. In other words, new spending laws or bills that either raise the tax rate, lower the tax rate, increase government expenditures, or decrease government expenditures. Now, anytime legislation is involved, time lags are common. A time lag refers to the amount of time it takes for a new law to be passed, to work its way through Parliament or Congress, and to have an effect on the level of demand in the economy. The existence of time lags poses an obstacle to the effectiveness of discretionary fiscal policy. By the time policymakers have identified a problem, such as high inflation, it might take them months or even years to get a law passed that is aimed at reducing the high inflation rate. Because of these time lags associated with discretionary fiscal policy, not to mention the difficulty that politicians often face in agreeing upon one another when passing new bills, a modern economy such as that of the United States often depends on what is called automatic fiscal policy or automatic stabilizers to promote the macroeconomic objectives without the need for policymakers to agree on new laws and for those new laws to pass their way through Congress or through the Parliament and make it into the actual economy. Automatic stabilizers in fiscal policy refer to systems that are in place which automatically counteract the effect that an increase or a decrease in aggregate demand will have on price level and employment in the economy. Automatic fiscal policies are intended to be what we call counter-cyclical. This means that if a country's business cycle is entering a contractionary period, automatic fiscal policy will kick in and initiate an expansion. On the other hand, during periods of inflation and high economic growth, counter-cyclical automatic fiscal policy will enact contractionary measures to limit the increase in aggregate demand and the inflation that accompanies an increase in aggregate demand. Some examples of counter-cyclical automatic fiscal policies are things such as a progressive taxation system, which will increase tax revenues as a nation's income increases without government having to do anything to change the law or to initiate an actual discretionary fiscal policy. Another example of a counter-cyclical automatic fiscal policy is unemployment benefits or welfare programs that provide income to people whose incomes are falling below a certain level. Unemployment benefits, on the other hand, will kick in when the unemployment rate rises. In other words, during a fall in aggregate demand, people will automatically start collecting unemployment benefits, which will help maintain the level of consumption and demand in the economy. So the big difference between discretionary fiscal policy and automatic fiscal policy is basically that a new law is needed in order for discretionary fiscal policy to have an effect on the economy. This requires cooperation among politicians and time. Automatic fiscal policies are much more immediate and their counter-cyclical nature means that during periods of contraction, aggregate demand will automatically be stimulated and during periods of inflation, the increase in tax revenues collected as people's income rises have a counter-cyclical impact by limiting the increase in aggregate demand and the inflation that is accompanied by such an increase. We're going to have a quick look at the aggregate demand aggregate supply graph on the right here and we're going to create a new graph on the top which shows the impact on a government's tax receipts and government expenditures resulting from the impact of automatic stabilizers such as progressive income taxes and unemployment benefits on an economy. Let's start by looking at our aggregate demand aggregate supply graph here and assume that the economy is currently producing at a level of 81 which corresponds with full employment and price level stability of P1. 
So the question is, what will happen as aggregate demand grows from AD1 to AD2 without any counter cyclical automatic stabilizers we would expect to see GDP increase to a level beyond full employment to Y2 and the price level increase due to demand pull inflation to P2. Let's assume that at YFE in our graph above we'll call this YFE the country had a budget balance of zero. In other words, its total tax receipts equaled its total government expenditures. The question is, what will happen to government expenditures and tax receipts as the economy moves from YFE to a higher level of income, which I'll call Y2 on this graph? Without any change in the law, government spending on things like unemployment and welfare payments will fall as the national income increases to Y2. Why is this? Well, clearly fewer people will be unemployed due to the higher level of aggregate demand and output, and fewer people will be living at a very low income level that will require them to collect things like welfare payments. So we would expect that government expenditures decreases as national income increases. So on our axis over here, we can see that government spending decreases as output increases. On the other hand, what will happen to tax revenues as output and income increase? Since most modern economies employ progressive marginal income taxes, which were also explained in an earlier video lecture, tax revenues will increase as national income increases automatically. So we end up with taxes increasing, government spending decreasing automatically without any change in the law. In this way, automatic stabilizers will counteract any inflationary impact of an increase in aggregate demand beyond the full employment level. The result of this should be disinflation or at least a decrease in the inflation rate as a result of the counter cyclical automatic stabilizers in the economy. So on a graph up here we can see that tax revenue should increase and government spending should decrease during a period of expansion due to the impact of automatic stabilizers in the economy. And the result of this should be a budget surplus assuming the country began at a balanced budget when it was at full employment. Now let's look at an example involving a decrease in aggregate demand and examine the counter cyclical impact of automatic stabilizers following a fall in AD. So now let's assume that due to a decrease in consumer confidence or the bursting of a housing bubble for whatever reason investment consumption or net exports falls and the economy experiences a demand deficient recession as AD falls to AD3. Without any automatic stabilizers, we would expect this to lead to a fall in output and deflation in the economy. Deflation has many macroeconomic consequences which are undesirable, and of course a fall in output means a recession. So we would like to see some expansionary fiscal policy enacted here in order to counteract this decrease in aggregate demand. However, as we know, discretionary fiscal policy takes time and legislative action and therefore we may rely on automatic stabilizers. So let's go back up to our graph on the top here and assume that we go from YFE to Y3. A decrease in national income and real GDP will automatically cause government spending to increase due to the automatic stabilizers such as unemployment benefits and welfare payments. People who lose their jobs due to lower demand will start collecting unemployment benefits from the government, which will help maintain demand and boost consumption. On the other hand, what happens to tax revenues? As incomes fall, the marginal tax rate, fewer people are earning higher income, so people are paying less income tax, so we would expect to see tax revenues to fall automatically as a result of the decrease in output and aggregate demand. What we end up with is the inverse of what we saw following an increase in aggregate demand, government spending automatically increases and tax revenues automatically decrease and we would likely see a budget deficit. In other words, government spending will increase as tax revenues decrease automatically due to the built-in stabilizers such as a progressive income tax system, welfare and unemployment benefits. Looking back at our ADIS graph, the desired outcome of these automatic stabilizers is to mitigate the effect of the fall in aggregate demand. We'd expect to see AD fall by less than it would otherwise. I'll call this AD 3.1. 
So following a decrease in aggregate demand, automatic stabilizers should mitigate that effect and prevent the recession from becoming too severe and prevent deflation from occurring in the economy. The important thing here is that we understand that not all fiscal policy requires legislative action. Any modern industrial economy is going to have built-in automatic stabilizers in their fiscal policy meant to be counter-cyclical in nature so that an increase in aggregate demand and the inflation that usually accompanies it will be mitigated. Likewise, a decrease in aggregate demand and the deflation and unemployment that usually accompanies it is mitigated as well without any need for government to agree on new laws and for those laws to pass through the government body and make their way into the economy.